let me just say like this. Rabbi Sai. So what's uh, where we're preparing for Shavuos? The Catholic spirit. What, what is that about? You know, the Ran in the end of Mesechtis Psachim brings a Midrash which we don't have that says, B'shosha Omar Lohem Moshe, when Moshe Rabbeinu told the Eden that uh, we're going to receive the Torah on Har Sinai, they said to him, Omru Lo Yisrael, Omru Lo Yisrael, Moshe Rabbeinu, Ein Mosaya Boidozu, when will this be? So he said to them, it's happening in 50 days. Everybody counted. This was a spontaneous count that even counted without being asked to count, without being told. It was, uh, they counted. And actually, means that uh, it wasn't like he was counting, so I'll also count. But everybody felt that way. Everybody was counting. Mosai, when is this going to be already? When are we going to get to the 50 days? We can. In other words, you know, if you look at the Torah, the mitzvah of Sfirah Soim is related to the bringing of the Oimer offering on the second day of Pesach. We don't bring the oymen. So why are we counting? That's what Chazal are struggling with. In other words, the count in the time of the Beis Hamikdash, it seems from this Midrash, wasn't related to Matan Torah, wasn't related to Shavuos. It was a count from the bringing of the Karben oymen. But why are we counting? We are counting, we're reenacting that original spontaneous count that Klal Yisrael counted before Matan Torah. Yeah, that's why we're counting. So, just like they were so excited as they were moving towards Matan Torah, so also we. We relive that experience, so to speak. So, according to this, the time of spirit is a joyous exciting time. We're looking forward to receive the Torah very soon. But you know that in time the days of Sphira became a time of mourning since the Talmudim of Rabbi Kiva died, the 24,000 Talmudim of Rabbi Kiva died, so the Yemei HaSphira became a time of Avelos, of mourning. So how are we expected yeah, to juggle between these two values? I mean, to, how could these two things coexist in our hearts and our minds, how can we also be celebrating the every day as we move closer and closer to Matan Torah and at the same time mourning the Talmudim of Rabbi Kiva. It seems like uh, something that's very difficult. It isn't so difficult for us because we're not so excited, we're not so much mourning, but let's say if we would really want to get into it, yeah, we would, we would have a problem, I think. Now, now uh, you know, in truth, the whole idea of mourning the death of the Talmidi Rabbi Kiva is something that's very hard to relate to. I mean, we know they were Gedoy like Yisrael, they were very important people, but we, first of all, we didn't know them personally, and it was a very, very long time ago. By now, no matter what, they wouldn't be alive anymore, right? And, and, and you know, the, the, even, we don't find our Velos anywhere beyond 12 months. Uh, this is a, an Avelos that goes on forever. And uh, how could we be asked to do something like that? I mean, you know, the Gemara says in Brachis that Chazok al Shem Shakeh Men The deceased become forgotten. The Gemara also says that Zoro Yisach Roinois Meshachech Hoyseh Zoro Yishoinois That the uh, person experiences, unfortunately, New Tzoros. He forgets the old Tzoros. I mean, the, the, the Jewish people, I mean, personally, uh, on a personal level, on a communal level, experienced many, many tragedies since the Talmudim of Rabbi Kiva died. How are we expected to honestly mourn the death of the Talmudim of Rabbi Kiva? 
you know, we find uh, something similar that uh, the death of Nodav Avihu, the two sons of Ahan. So they, they, the, on Yom Kippur, we read the first half of Pashas Achare Mois in the morning and the second half in the afternoon. You know, the, the first half of Pashas Achare Mois, we read because it contains the Seder, Avoidas Yoim Akipurim, the Karbonis that the Karim Gadol brought on Yom Kippur. But we begin with a Pasik, Achare Mois Shnei Bnei Ahar. And the Bayer Hete commentary on Shulchan Aruch, Tafresh Chafal brings in the name of the Zoyar and the Arizal that one should be mitz, that when that is read, when that is read, one should be mitzta'er, one should be in pain, one should be pained about the Misa of Talmidir Bakiva. Yeah, he should be pained. And he should, one should shed tears. One should shed tears over the death of the yeah? That's for me. Keep it. So the thing is like this. So, I mean, we, we, we asked, We're heard, 3,000 years later, we should be shedding tears. I mean, how could we do that without uh, fooling ourselves? Yeah? The Rambam says in Hilkes Abel, You don't cry over a dead person more than three days. If you're crying over the death of a Talmud Chachim, it's Lafi Roif Chachmasam, depending on how on how wise he was. However, the Ein Boichin Yosem Rishloishim Yoyim. It's never more than thirty days. No, we're here for three thousand years. We're shedding tears over the children of Ahar. Now you know the reason that we read Parshas Achare on Yom Kippur is because it contains the Seder by the Yom Kippur. We heard the Pasuk Achare Moish Nebene Ahar, and it's just the beginning of this Parsha that we happen to read because we begin from the beginning of the Parsha. Why is this a time to cry over their death? They didn't die on Yom Kippur. They actually died on Rosh Chodesh Nisan on the Yom Hashmini Lemiluim. That's when they died. So if any time we read this, it, we should be brought to tears. We should. Uh, Crying when uh, we read it in Parshas Achare Mois also. Why is it connected with Yom Kippur? So, I want to suggest as follows. You know, the, the, the Gemara says in Eruvin, Ketzat Seide Mishnah, how did Moshe Rabbeinu teach Torah to the Jewish people? Moshe Lomad Mipiat Vurim. Moshe learned the Torah from the Rabbeinu Shalom. Nichnas Aharon Vishono Loi Moshe Pirkoi. So Aaron entered, and Moshe Rabbeinu learned the Torah with Aaron, his brother. Then the Stalik Aaron, Yoshev was Shmuel Moshe. Aaron moved moved to the side, to the left side of Moshe, but he stayed there. Nichnesu Bonov, he Aaron's children entered, and Shona Lahem Moshe Pirka. Then Moshe Rabbeinu taught Aaron's children the Torah. Stalku Bonov. Then Aaron's children moved aside. Elazar Yoshev Liyamin Moshe. Elazar, the son of Aaron, sat on the right side of his uncle Moshe. And his summer sat on the left side of Moshe. And then Nichnesu Zekenim. Vishonu Le Moshe Pirkon. Nistalpu Zekenim. Nichnesu Kolaam. Vishonu Le Moshe Pirkon. So the Raisa concludes. Nimsu Biyat Aaron Arbo. Aaron. Learned Torah from Moshe Rabbeinu four times. Once Moshe Rabbeinu was teaching him, then Moshe Rabbeinu was teaching his children, then Moshe Rabbeinu was <coughs> teaching the Canaan, and then he was teaching Kol Ha'am, and Aaron was there for all these four sessions. Biyad Bonov Shlosha. Aaron's children heard Torah from Moshe Rabbeinu three times. They heard what Moshe Rabbeinu taught them when he continued to teach this Canaan, and he continued to teach the Bali So I say, so Moshe Rabbeinu, so Aaron's children had a special status, had a special role in receiving and giving over Torah. They were those that heard Torah three times from Moshe Rabbeinu. Three times. The rest of Klai Yisrael only heard it once. This Canaan heard it twice. But Aaron's children learned Torah three times from Moshe Rabbeinu. So, it could be that the pain that we're pained by the premature death of Nodova Avihu 
It's not about the personal tragedy of Aaron, their father, not about their untimely death in terms of, you know, uh, how long they lived, but it's about the fact that we lost two important links in the Messiah of Torah, because if they would have lived on, they would have been one of those that learned Torah from Moshe Rabbeinu three times and continued to give it over to Klal Yisrael, whereas since we lost them, we're li- missing these two links in the Messiah of Torah on the level of Torah as it is learned three times from Moshe Rabbeinu. That's why it also connects with uh, it also connects with Yom Kippur because Yom Kippur, you know, is a day of Matan Torah. Yom Sim Chasliboy is the day that the Luchos Shniyos were given to Klal Yisrael. That's why, together with the celebration of Yom Sim Chasliboy, we also mourn what we're missing in Torah. We we celebrate what we have and we mourn what we're missing because we're missing those two links that would have carried over Torah Shabbal Peh on their level. So that's why we shed tears over the Bnei Aharon on Yom Kippur. Now, it would seem that that's also the Avelis on the 24,000 Talmudim of Rabbi Kippur. We're not talking about the personal loss to their families. We're not talking about the tragedy of, 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 of their death per se, but we're talking about what we're missing in the Messiah of Torah Shival Peh. And therefore, this is really connected with the preparation for Matan Torah, because what's the the preparation for Matan Torah? It's really the feeling of how important Torah is to us. As the Chinuch explains at length in the Mitzvah Shin Vod, where he actually even interprets the Doiraisa, the the Kemitzvah of Svirah Sa'ibah to be related to Matan Torah. And he says that it's to express the fact that the Jewish people understood that the redemption from slavery in Mitzrayim had no real value until they received the Torah. Because Ein Lachav Ben Chorin Elo Mishoisik Ba Torah. Without Torah, a person is not really free. He's uh, chasing after this, that, and the other thing. A person could be possessed by his possessions. A person can be enslaved by, by everything around him. You know, behold, door of a door. In every generation, a person has to have the ability to see just himself, not to see how do, how does he, what does he expect from me? What do they expect from me? How, 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 how do I look in this person's eyes? I mean, what, 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 I mean, literally, it's not smart. And if you learn, you're really it's not smart, you kill your husband's child, then you're a free man. But as long as you're, as long as you're, 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 you're reacting to everyone around you, then you're uh, really enslaved. In any case, let me we understand that Torah is the only thing that makes us and keeps us free. And therefore, the Yemea sphere, when we're preparing for Torah, which means we're instilling in ourselves the, the, the recognition that the Torah is everything. So we mourn the loss of Talmidei Rebakiva, which is because we understand that every, every little bit of Torah that we're missing is a big deal. It's a big deal. But at the same time, it's a time of celebration because if you recognize the loss, you also recognize the gain. If we think about the fact that in spite of the fact that the Jewish people lost and lost and lost, and in spite of the fact that we regressed so many times, we continue to progress. And we're here today, and we're still putting on film, and we're still uh, keeping Shabbos, and we're still committing to Torah. So it's so much more to celebrate at the time of Matan Torah. So I'm saying not only is the mourning during the Sphere not a contradiction, with rejoicing in Matan Torah, but it actually enhances our excitement about the receiving of the Torah. So they still hoping that we should, the uh, Torah should have the right, the right place in our life. And we should uh, try to uh, move in the right direction and all have a, a good new Thank you very much.